Hi all, this is my attempt at solutions to problem set two. I hope this works out well. Uh, starting with question one, we have a recursive sequence. Each a n plus one is n plus one over two n plus one times a n. And that's all we know about the sequence. And of course you can plug in when n equals one, you get that a two is equal to two over three times a one. Um, when n equals 2, you get a3 is equal to uh, 3 over 5 times a2. So that makes a2 equal to 2 thirds. a3 is equal to 3 fifths of 2 thirds or 2 fifths. When you add those up, you get 31 fifteenths. Okay, the first kind of deep question is to ask about the ratio test. So the ratio test asks you to find this limit. The limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k. So here, two important things are to use what it is that we know about the sequence and to replace things with other things that they're equal to. Okay, And a lot of people just got thrown when you say it that way. It sounds very simple. But here, um, you cannot just replace a k plus 1 and a k with k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 and k plus 2 over 2k plus 3, because they're not equal to each, those things. Um, what do we know that a k plus 1 is equal to? The only thing we know it's equal to is k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 times a k. Okay, so we can replace a k plus 1 with this expression and then see what happens, right? There's lots of other things we might do, but that's the first thing to try. And when you try that, you see, oh, I'm dividing that expression by a k. The a k's cancel out. There is no need to do anything else. So the simplest possible thing you could do makes this now an easy problem. The limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 1 over 2k plus 1. Absolute values, but the absolute values are um, everything is positive, is just 1 half. Okay? So... Here I looked at, I wrote down the expression that I wanted to simplify, and then in simplifying, I just replaced things with other things that they're equal to. Uh, here, I asked you to look at these series and decide if they meet the assumptions of the integral test. So first off, um, uh, do, do they at all? Um, the conditions of the integral test are that you can replace the sum over k with an integral over x. So you have to be able to replace all of the functions appearing in that formula with continuous functions. Those functions have to be eventually positive and eventually increasing. Can we do that here? No. k factorial, we do not know any formula for x factorial, right? What is 3 halves factorial? We don't know. That's a subtle one. There is, in fact, a formula that you can replace this with. If you do it properly, you can make this sequence, uh, the continuous version of this sequence, positive and uh, decreasing. Um, but we don't know anything about it. So we're not in a place to use the integral test. Um, how about this one? Yeah. We can just replace that with x plus 1, ln of x plus 1. If you look at that, that's perfectly well defined. If you look at it, it's clearly positive as long as x is bigger than 0. And it is increasing if x is bigger than 0, so that's fine. Cos k over k squared. Cos k is constantly jumping between positive and negative pretty much randomly if you look at the integers. There's no easy recognizable pattern there. Um, so this is definitely not, it is not even um, eventually positive. n squared over 3 to the n, same as we can replace it with x squared over 3 to the x, totally fine. 1 over m to the m, replace it with 1 over x to the x. This would be problematic if x were negative. It'd be hard to know what that meant. but when x is positive, perfectly sensible. 
positive, decreasing, all is good. Um, this last one, 1 plus sine k over k squared, it's you can, of course, replace it with 1 plus sine x over x squared. It is essentially always positive. Every once in a while, you get 0. Um, but, um, but it is certainly not decreasing. So um, it keep, it's always positive, except where it hits 0. So it looks like that. Okay. Infinitely many wobbles. Okay, I wrote out this sum to try and make it pretty easy to see what's going on. You can see that the two places that change in each formula, I've written them so they always look like k. So we've got the term in parentheses is k minus one squared on the numerator is plus one. In the denominator, we have k cubed plus one, and the sign keeps changing. Okay, sign changing means we know it's minus one to the k or minus one to the k plus one. When k equals one, it's positive, so it has to be k plus one. So that is our formula. Uh, the absolute value, everything in here is positive or zero whenever. Uh, uh, k is 1 or bigger, except minus 1 to the k plus 1, whose absolute value is 1. So here's the positive version. It is the limit comparison test is the one we want to use here, because if you uh, replace with this with its simplified version, you get k squared over k cubed, which is 1 over k. That's a p-series with p equals 1. Uh, and therefore, this is a mistake. The simplified series diverges. Um, since the simplified series diverges, the positive series also diverges. And so the original alternating series doesn't converge absolutely. Um, because the positive version is divergent. We need to decide between converges conditionally and diverges. It's an alternating series, so the only choice is the alternating series test, and it passes. The um, This positive version is um, eventually decreasing. In fact, it is, I think, decreasing the whole way, and um, it approaches zero, of course. So this is conditionally convergent. Question four. Once again, I ask you to use the ratio test, so you should start writing out the ratio test and see what you can do to simplify it. We need the limit as k goes to infinity. On the bottom, you put the terms of the series, k cubed over a to the k. On the top, you put that same expression with every k replaced with k plus one. Then you simplify it. We've got over here, k cubed terms, and over here, the a to the k terms. The absolute value depends on uh, a, everything else is positive. As k goes to infinity, k cubed over k, k plus 1 cubed over k cubed becomes simplifies to k cubed over k cubed. Um, a to the k plus 1 absolute value over absolute value a to the k becomes absolute value of a. So the whole thing becomes absolute value of a. The ratio test tells us this converges whenever that quantity is less than 1. So it converges when absolute value of a is less than 1, which is the same as when minus 1 is less than a is less than 1. I only asked you what the ratio test told you, so you don't have to check um, what happens when a equals 1 and minus 1. The ratio test does not tell you anything there. Um, and finally, um, 
here is a complex expression that depends not only on the index k, which we're summing over, but an additional parameter p, positive real number. When p equals 1, we get the square root of k to the 1 over k to the 1 plus 1. When p equals 4, we get the square root of k to the 4 plus 1 over k plus 1 to the 4th. What does the simplified series look like for each of those? Well, here we get rid of the plus 1 and the plus 1. We get square root of k over k, which is the same as 1 over square root of k, or 1 over k to the 1 half. When p equals 4, we get rid of the plus 1 and the plus 1. So we've got the square root of k to the 4th on the top, which is k squared, and k to the 4th in the bottom. So we end up with 1 over k squared. What do we do for arbitrary p? Exact same thing. You throw away the 1s, and that leaves you with square root of k to the p over k to the p, which is k to the p over 2 over k to the p, which is 1 over k to the p over 2. That's a tricky point of algebra, right? We had to do a few rules of exponents there, but you got to check that by comparing it to these particular expressions. When p equals 1, this expression gives you 1 over k to the 1 half. When p equals 4, this expression gives you 1 over k squared. So you can be highly confident in your answer. Um, in that case, this is a p series. The letter p is confusing, but the exponent is p over 2. So it's going to converge when p over 2 is greater than 1, which is to say when p is greater than 2. OK, that's the problem set. I just want to emphasize that I would like to see you guys fill this out completely. You do not have to tell me what, when you use the notes, when you asked me. I want to see actual interactions with other students. You may not talk to anyone who's not a student. Do not talk to your dad. Do not talk to a tutor. Only people who are in my three sections. Um, when I ask you, do you feel comfortable with the help you gave? Most of you answered um, by basically telling me whether you thought the help you gave was helpful, which is an interesting thing. But I would also like you to think about whether you are helping somebody in a way that they are gaining understanding or whether you are helping someone in a way that they are writing your answer down without any idea. Okay, If you are going to talk to someone else and provide help, one of your responsibilities is to assess that clearly and honestly. When you provide help to someone, are you checking that they are gaining an understanding? And are they using that help in a way that's gaining your understanding? If not, I want you to give me your honest assessment. They're not going to get in trouble, but you need to assess honestly whether that's what's happening. Um, in the same way, you need to assess honestly whether, particularly if you got help, but in general, did I understand what I wrote down for this problem? Did I understand what my answer was? If I got called by Professor Salwan and was asked to explain how I did this problem, would I be able to give some kind of coherent answer? Sometimes you have an intuition that you're kind of following. You can't explain it exactly. That's OK, but think about that. Think about it and address it. I am also interested to hear what you do when you get stuck, what you do to get unstuck. It's a very unusual situation for all of us. You, I think, um, are struggling with kind of newest situations of not being able to talk to people in the way you usually can, of being very solitary. And I would like you to use this as an opportunity to kind of watch how you think, watch what works and what doesn't work. You can bring that into the rest of your life. So I'm asking you to um, think carefully about these questions, partly because I am interested in, in maintaining a level of academic honesty and asking each of you to think about if you are doing that appropriately. But also, I want you to think about how you are approaching this, how it's working for you, what you are learning about yourself. That's all. Take care.